Holy Hevra, beloved friends, sacred community, here in person and connecting via Zoom from near and far. I stand here before you on the Sarah Rosh Hashanah with great joy and great pride, with incredible wonder and delight, and with a gaping, gasping, broken heart. My heart is broken. My heart is broken by the world overheating and the forests burning, the polar ice sheets melting and birds falling from the sky, broken by the terror in Afghanistan, anguished Afghan parents throwing their babies over the airport walls to US soldiers pleading for their babies to be saved broken by the digital meanness of my neighbors on nextdoor.com, by my sister dying of brain cancer, while my father, the doctor who couldn't save her, clutches her hand weeping, broken by all I have not tended, all I cannot change in my past or fix in my family. And within the expanse of my broken, breaking heart, I find there is space for more, more tenderness, more patience, more real knowing of the complexities of this fragile human existence. And with this, amazingly, I experience a corresponding capacity for seeing and feeling joy and wonder and peace. Like Grasshopper love, the wonder of mating grasshoppers devoted to bringing the next generation into life, even during the final days of their own lives. The cool, pure waters of Left Hand Creek right here in our backyard. Nature's strength and beauty persisting. The deliciousness of these exquisite musicians here with me, whose skill is matched only by their deep caring spirits. And so I stand here holding this paradox, the tension that is the privilege of my life, the wounding, heartache, and outrage. On the one hand, the ease and bounty, opportunities on the other. And what about you? I invite you, all of us, to take a moment now to check in. How is your one precious heart? The invitation is to touch that tension, to touch into these counterposed edges of our experience. This is the season of teshuva, of return, coming back, coming home. Like we sang earlier, return to the land of your soul. And perhaps the most essential aspect of this, the foundation, is to show up fully to bring all of ourselves with us. With the new moon on this night, we move from the month of Elul into the new month of Tishrei. Within our Jewish cosmology, each month is associated with a particular energy and aspect of the divine. During Tishrei, that aspect is Melech, king, the sovereign. This is the monarch who sees all and judges. Let's recall that Rosh Hashanah is also known as Yom Hadin, the Day of Judgment, for it's on this day that the heavenly ledgers are opened and the king, that great judge, weighs our good deeds against our bad and thereby determines each one's fate for the coming year. We pray to Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king, Avinu Malkenu Chonenuva Aninu, show us grace, answer our prayers. In the English, we call out to our parent, our sovereign, our source. And as we stand before this singular sovereign, this great authority, we ask ourselves is the father not also the loving parent? 
Yes. And can the king be judge and also be merciful? Yes. Embedded within our High Holidays Liturgy is the line in which we remind God about one of her own highest values, life, our lives, yours and mine. We pray, Zohreinu l'chaim, remember us for life, for another year of life. Melech hafetz b'chaim, you sovereign who desires life. We find here another point of tension to hold and acknowledge as we set out on this journey. We stand before the judge. We stand before each other. And we look with clear eyes at ourselves, at our own lives. And as we do, we ask for mercy and compassion from one another within ourselves and from our God. So this brings me to our theme for this year, Brit Kedusha, Holy Weavings. We touched on this earlier tonight. Let's bring into focus this term Brit, or Bris, as it's commonly pronounced in the Ashkenazi way. Covenant, contract, sacred agreement, the relationship between us, the Jewish people, and the one who formed us, the source of all. We enter this new year without knowing what the future will bring. Our High Holy Days prayers are for the year to come. We pray for a good year, Shana Tova, for a year of peace and prosperity, and for life. Above all, we pray to be granted another year of life. And what are we bringing in exchange? In considering this question, I'd like to take us briefly into Torah, into Parashat Terumah. Here, we're in the book of Exodus. And the narrative at this point is where our ancestors are in the wilderness encamped. They have been freed from slavery in Egypt and sustained with food and water, even have received the revelation, the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. Parsha Teruma is devoted to the exacting preparations and construction of the Mishkan, the Holy Tabernacle. It begins with Hashem instructing Moses on what to say to the people. Daber el b'nei Yisrael v'yikhuli teruma. Tell them to take from me a portion, teruma. What is this teruma? The word often is translated as portion, and in modern Hebrew it can mean contribution or offering. In Torah times, the contribution requested consisted of materials needed to build the Mishkan, including precious metals, wool of various colors, animal skins, wood, spices, and gemstones. The rabbis teach that this word teruma implies a separation, separating a part of one's resources and setting that part aside for a higher purpose. They teach about the effect of bringing forth this kind of portion. The root of the Hebrew, Hebrew word teruma means to uplift, as in romanu, what we chant when we are um, processing with the Torah. Raise up. You see, the offering of teruma serves to elevate both the giver and the giver's own idea about the meaning of material wealth. In this parsha, we also find the mysterious and wonderful line, the asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. This is the voice of the Holy One, again saying, let them make a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell among them. Note, the Hebrew does not say build a sanctuary so I may dwell in it, in the sanctuary. Rather, the Holy One intends to dwell among them, the people, us. Rabbi Lauren Jonathan Sachs has a wonderful take on this project of building the Mishkan. He teaches about the important shift in the attitude of our ancestors at this point. Here was an instruction for the people to create something together. And during all the remaining chapters of Exodus pertaining to these instructions, 
we don't read of any complaints by the Israelites. Rabbi Sachs write, writes, the building of the tabernacle was the first great projects the Israelites undertook together. It involved their generosity and skill. It conferred upon them the dignity of labor and creative endeavor. The society they were summoned to create in the future in the land of Israel would be one in which everyone would play their part. Through this, a remarkable proposition is framed. It is not what God does for us that transforms us. It's what we do for God. Rabbi Sachs points to this. The book of Genesis, the first book, begins with God creating a universe, a home for all of us, all things, all beings. And the end of Exodus, the second book, ends with human beings creating the Mishkan, a home for God. And herein lies one of the most fundamental principles of our Jewish tradition. We are called on to become co-creators with God. Our work is completing the work of creation. Now hold that thought. I hope you're still with me. I'd like to bring forth one more important element from Parshat Teruma before we bring the conversation back to our lives in this new year. It's that verse we started with in which God requests a portion for the Mishkan. Because the instructions carry an important detail about who is to bring this portion, this Teruma. The text reads, Me'et kol ish asher yidvenu libo from each person whose heart motivates them, let them bring my portion. It's for those who are heart motivated. These are the people who are to bring forth the Teruma, their uplifted offerings. The Teruma is a voluntary giving, an offering of the heart. And just as the Israelites of the desert thousands of years ago came together to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, so we are called to do the same in our day each and every year. We are called on to build our Mishkan, the dwelling place for the Holy One. And what is this dwelling place? We no longer have the Aron HaKodesh, the Holy Ark with the stone tablets. We no longer have the temple in Jerusalem. So where is God's dwelling place? Perhaps it's in this very Hevra, this community of seekers and God wrestlers right here. Perhaps it's in our homes and our relationships, when we gather around the table, when we speak with love to one another. Perhaps it's in our very own hearts. The answer, of course, is all of the above and beyond. How and where and with whom each of us takes on the building of God's dwelling place in our own lives may be as varied as we are as individuals. The essential inquiry I invite us all into as we launch into these days of awe is this. What is my portion? What is the Teruma I'm meant to bring forth this year? I started this talk by sharing with you my heavy heart and inviting you to check into your own. Our grief and loss are real. The fear and anxiety many of us experience in our lives are real. We bring this forward. We name it and acknowledge it. What we cannot do is let it stop us. We cannot let the weight of the world, the weight of our own pain, keep us from moving forward. Keep us from showing up with joy, from sharing our gifts and allowing the sweetness in our hearts to shine through. One month ago, as we launched into Elul, Rabbi Tirza Firestone held a retreat of preparation for these High Holy Days. During the retreat, she shared a very inspiring teaching by Rabbi Noach Shalom Berasovsky known as the Salonimer Rebbe. 
He's quoting the Ari, the great 16th century Kabbalist, Rabbi Isaac Luria. And I'd like to acknowledge Rav Tirza for her translation of this teaching, and even more for her ever flowing passion as an interpreter of Jewish wisdom for our day. The Salonimer Rebbe is giving a teaching on Re'e, a Parsha in Deuteronomy, a teaching with great relevance for our exploration here. He speaks about the purpose of our lives for each and every one of us. And for each of us, that purpose is tikkun, repair, some way of making this world a more just and kind and safe place. Now I'm quoting excerpts from the Slanama Rebbe. From the beginning of creation onward, no person can be compared to any other. Likewise, every human being has their own sacred mission to repair one particular thing. For this, they are brought down from the supernal worlds to this world below. The Holy One created the world in order to give over goodness to all creatures and sets up for each of us the specific conditions leading to fulfill our repair work. Everything is done for us so we are able to fulfill the task for which we came. How does this land for you? Inspiring? Intimidating? Did you know you had a sacred purpose, unique among all people ever created? This construct may sound antiquated or overly constricting. It could make us anxious. And yet the invitation here is into curiosity and inquiry, into prayer, that we may know our highest deployment. Deployment, a term beloved by our dear Reb Zalman of blessed memory. I'd like to soften and expand this idea by considering that what we are looking for is our purpose for now, for this point in our lives, for this coming year, the way in which each of us may shine most brightly with the greatest uplift for ourselves and others. The tikkun or repair the Slanama Rebbe speaks of refers to action. It may start internally with contemplation and solitude, with, with inner work, and yet it's truly about work in the community, in the world, with our families and others. Many of us are familiar with the well-known saying from Pirkei Avot, the teachings of the ancestors. It goes like this, it is not your duty to finish the work, but neither are you at liberty to neglect it. The work referred to here is the work of perfecting the world, of completing creation, this co-creation we've been talking about, and so I invite us to re-engage, re-engage with our high holidays, practices and prayers, re-engage with our mission of being bringers of light and healing and wisdom into this world. On Yom Kippur, during the Kol Nidre prayers, we will release ourselves and one another from commitments that no longer serve us from the ways in which we've bound ourselves to beliefs and practices that keep us hidden, that keep us small. But please don't wait until then. These next 10 days are ripe with possibility. Let's let the shofar's call crack us open. Let the energy of the new moon draw us into newness. Make full use of this auspicious time to clean up what's messy, make those phone calls, write those letters, reach out and speak up, and take time to be still and quiet, connecting to your deepest longings and deepest knowings. Pray for clarity. Pray to know your highest purpose right now and for the courage to step into it.
Let's all find our Taruma for this year, 5782. And let's bring forth healing to our broken hearts and to this broken world. Blessings. Lashana Tovah.